welcome everyone to uh, the third segment of our um, advocacy in the main legislature. This is a how-to series for new and experienced advocates working in a range of issues. Um, we are uh, Democracy Maine, that is the League of Women Voters of Maine, Maine Citizens for Clean Elections. Um, I am Anna Keller. I'm the executive director of those organizations. I'm so happy to be joined today uh, by Desti Homan Sprague, who is the executive director of the Maine Women's Lobby, who we work with closely on some policy areas and also share um, some underlying goals of making the legislature and working on policy more accessible and understandable for Maine people. I am going to turn it over in just a second here to Desti. Um, and as we go, um, I'll remind folks that if you've got a burning question, um, you can always drop it in the Q&A. That'll help us be aware of it. Um, and we will also take some time um, as we get closer to the end of the hour to talk through your questions and things that you're wondering about. So today we're gonna cover um, pieces about how you can use and make sense of the Maine legislature's website. Um, we'll talk about legislative history, a little bit about roll call votes, how to see who's sponsoring bills and how to understand how your legislator is voting. And we are doing this all with the goal that whatever issue you're working on, um, this will help you to better track those issues through the legislature, better understand how your legislator is voting. Um, and we will um, hopefully give you enough so that you can um, go digging into the, all of the corners that you want to. Um, and then undoubtedly, like I do every day, come up with new things that you are curious about and um, want some explanations on. And um, that's why we've got more parts of this series coming up. Great, and so with that, um, I will turn it over to Desti. We're so glad to have join us today. She's been putting together these awesome um, little uh, videos covering different pieces of the legislature and how um, different parts of the process work. And I'm really glad that she was able to join us to take us through it today. All right. Well, great. Thank you so much, Anna. I really appreciate it. And hello, and thank you to all of you who may uh, have your dinner waiting on the stove until you finish uh, tonight's event. Um, or I hope you're you're not waiting and you're eating now if you're hungry. Um, but uh, I'm I'm thrilled to be able to be here. I'm such a fan of the league and um, Democracy Maine and the work that uh, Anna and the whole team and all of the folks out in local chapters do. Uh, I am Desti with the Maine Women's Lobby. The Maine Women's Lobby was founded in 1978 after a group of women went to the National Women's Conference and came back fired up to do some work here in Maine they decided to get together and work on a bill to establish uh, funding from the state for the first uh, battered women's shelter in Maine. That's what they were calling them then. Uh, they did all the work to get a sponsor and write a bill and uh, move it all the way through committee and the session. They thought they had it all locked up. And then the morning after the final night of the session, they learned that in fact, the bill had not been funded because in the wee hours when the legislators were going through the appropriations, the funding bills, there was no one in the room to advocate for this bill. So the women's lobby was founded with $2 donations. Um, so that's a little bit about our story. We've been doing legislative advocacy on gender equity since then. And I uh, have only been with the lobby for a year, but I've been doing legislative advocacy on gender equity and sexual violence and anti-poverty work for about 15 years. And one of the things I wanna lead with is that um, in all those years, I have not yet found all of the nooks and crannies on the legislature's website. So like, we're gonna talk about that and I'm gonna show you some things, but um, 
the reality is the legislative website is a little clunky. It's a little hard to navigate. Um, and you might be at it for a long time before you figure it all out, if ever. And that's okay. And you shouldn't feel bad. So if you're wondering like why you can't find the things you're looking for, you're not alone. We can't either. So would you, is that, give me a thumbs up, Anna. Am I right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, I will start with, I'll do a few um, kind of elementary things. If you're here tonight because you're interested in uh, policy stuff, I'm going to guess that many of these are things that you do already know about. So go ahead and uh, drop your questions in the chat or, you know, whatever your system is here. If you have a specific question on a page that I can pause and show you about, if it's something that I already have a plan to show you, then I'll just let you know, like, oh, we'll get to that in a minute. But, you know, feel free to stop me and, and flag me down because I'm really happy to let this be a conversation. So you, uh, you down at the bottom of your screen, you have a little chat button so you can go ahead and type questions in there. You can also react. Um, you should have reactions so you can like, yeah, you don't have to give me an applause. I'm, I'm fine even without applause. Don't worry. Um, but if there is something that you want to react to, you're welcome to. Um, you can also chat me directly if you find that you need to. So otherwise I will, uh, I'll just go ahead and, and launch in to an overview. Sound all right? Okay. Great. So I'm going to go back and forth between the slides here and then my own screen share. I think I should be able to sort of steal the screen share from you, Anna. But we want to start with really just where is where's the room that it happens? Where are we talking about? We are talking about legislature.maine.gov. That is the portal to everything that happens in the legislature in Maine. There is nowhere else. So this is the spot. Um, if you want to, and let's see, if you want to, oh, here, I will, okay, great. Okay, so am I now, uh, I'm sharing? Super. Looks good. All right, so a couple of things that you'll find right on the front here is that this is the portal, not only for you as the public, but it's also the portal for legislators to access the things that they need. So there's like, everything in here. They've tried to set it up so that some of the key things that you're going to look for are right here in the middle of the page. At the top, you will find the access directly to the Senate. They have their own website that's a sub site off of this one and then access directly to the House. They have their own website, which is a subset off of this website. And then if you're looking for news and information here, you will find it down along the side. So, um, John, just so you know, I see that you're not seeing Q&A on your screen. In the meeting format, we don't have Q&A, but you can go ahead and type any questions that you have directly into the chat, okay? Um, Sorry, that was my fault. Oh, no Go right into the chat. <laughs> um, okay, so that is the legislature, like the front page. And let's go ahead and see if, are you seeing the next slide, the don't miss, how to find people? We are, but it's not okay. full screen. All right, well, that's all right. So I'm going to head over here to the legislative site and let you know how to find people. So if you remember where I said at the beginning that there are two different portals, you need to know who you're looking for if you're looking for your senator or for your house rep. So and then there's going to be a slightly different way to find them depending on the page. So let's click here and go to the Senate home. And this is the Senate page. And this you'll see talks about the main Senate, the Senate calendar, Senate leadership, et cetera. Um, 
out to the main Senate. Main Senate home. All right. And then down here on the left are the main senators. And so you'll see that senators are listed several dip different ways. A lot of people don't know what Senate district they live in. I actually have lived in the same town for 11 years and I don't know the number of my district. I don't know why, I just don't. So um, I look mine up by municipality, uh, you know, or I would look up directly by that person's name, but it gives you these multiple ways to find it. So you can click on municipality. I live in Bath. So I'll scroll down here all the way to the bees bath and there, Eloise Vitelli. When you click through, it gives you the whole profile for Senator Vitelli or whoever your senator is. So you can find her home address, uh, you know, her phone number, her home phone number, her state house phone number, email, website, etc. Um, it also lets you know when that person is term limited out. Maine has terms, uh, term limits. So there's a maximum of eight years that folks can serve. And she's termed out in 2024 and what committees she sits on. So that's super helpful. You should know that all of these ways of getting in touch are completely reasonable and appropriate and adequate ways to get in touch with your um, senator or representative. Um, if you call the state house, you can leave a message. They will definitely get it. If you call their home, then I just encourage you obviously to um, follow the rules that you would follow or want followed if you yourself were a legislator. So, you know, don't call late at night, don't call super early in the morning because these are in fact their homes. <laughs> so let's go back to um, the home and then head over to the house because this is a different way of finding your legislature. You'll note here, it's a totally different website. It's set up differently. Um, they have different information. So I actually think that the, the house is slightly um, easier to navigate. They have over here on the right, find your representative um, and information right here in the middle, member info. So either of those are going to get you what you want. If you look right on this front page, it's alphabetical by last name. But down here on the side, you also can find the district towns or alphabetical towns. So that's how you find it over here. But don't, you know, hesitate to go ahead and keep poking around and just remember that you're not going to find it all in one place. One thing that I also do suggest to folks is if you don't know who your person is or if you're looking for a specific person in a different town, um, you can also just go to open states. Openstates.org is a really um, great resource that will help you access directly to those people um, all in one spot. So you can just click in here and you know put in your zip code um, and that'll do the job as well. So the next thing uh, is how to find a bill. So this is right front and center on the front of the website here. You, but you may not know that that's what you're looking at. So LDs are how we, the, what we call bills. These are legislative documents. Bills always start as an LR. Uh, that is basically just their bill title. It's a legislative record. And when they're an LR, they're like, just a mystery um, placeholder for a bill. Once they become an LD, that means that they are official. They have their own tiny web page. Um, they have a number and there's bill text that's available to the public. So right here in the center is where you're going to look. If you already know your LD number, you can put it right in here. Let's see, I'm going to look up LD85. Uh, and that will bring you directly to the bill. In this case, this is a bill that we at the Women's Lobby are really interested in. 
it makes sure that main care covers um, pasteurized donor breast milk for uh, parents who are unable to nurse or babies who are unable to receive um, breast milk. So that's one way to do it. If you do not know your LD number, you can put in text. So oh look, you can see some of my past searches, postpartum, nonviolent, cell phone. <laughs> um, sometimes, bills don't have a name that exactly aligns with what is actually in the bill. And so you may have to try different things. You can see I actually tried a couple of different ways here uh, to find the main Equal Rights Amendment. I searched discrimination, equal rights in quotes, equal rights not in quotes. <laughs> Uh, none of those things got me what I was looking for in this particular case. So I ended up going and finding it through the sponsor. I share that story with you not to um, make you feel that this is going to be impossible, but rather to let you know you're just, you've got to be creative about it and, uh, and try, try again and don't feel like you're alone in the trying. Okay. So let's see, in this case, though, uh, if I wanted to find that LD, I would put in uh, breast milk. Oh, and no documents matching your query. So try, try again. Um, the other thing to know is that this advanced bill search is super helpful. Um, uh, I'm gonna open up the advanced bill search. There are many, many ways here to search for a specific bill. So over here on the top right, LD number, that's the place where you're going to put in the LD number if you have one. My kid is bringing me fresh guacamole, so I hope you have such good people that you live with. Um, the, so you can put the LD number in here. Uh, this is also the place, though, that if you want to search for bills from previous sessions, this is where you're going to want to go. So every session has a number, and that number runs for two years. Uh, you elect legislature legislators, and they are seated for a two-year session or a term. So we're in the 130th. You do have to know what session you're looking back for if you want to search by the session name, but that's one way to do it. Um, so if I wanted to search for a bill from last session, let's see, we worked 1410 was a bill that we worked on at great length. Um, and it's telling me, okay, from and to must both be specified. So you gotta put 1410 in both places. There we go. And I like to give it like the, this is what I refer to in my head and um, it's told Desti um, that this is what I call the blue website. Um, I don't really know, um, you know, exactly uh, whether it has a, a specific name, but it is the smarter um, search and sometimes it feels smarter than me. Um, but usually if you poke around at it and try different things, eventually you'll get where you want to go. Yeah, and you may have to, you know, search a couple of different ways as I had to do around the discrimination bill. So you can search by number over there. You can search by sponsor. So this is a great way to find um, bills that specifically were uh, sponsored by legislators who you're, you're looking for. Uh, over here, you can look at uh, title containing um, let's see, so election, let's see what, what comes up. Uh, oh, nothing, because I still had sponsored, had 1410 in, um, but if we search for election, all right, it's not doing it for me. There's also subject containing, so there are lots of different ways to do that. And this is the place where you also are going to see that there are many different types of um, bills or rules or resolves um, 
bills are not the only the only game in town. There are also proposed constitutional amendments, proposed studies, um, and those each have their own special kind of, um, you know, a designation. So this is the spot where you would find that. I guess I would just say, if you know the issue area of something that you want to find and you can't find it, just call someone who's working on it. Um, <laughs> like give it your 10 minutes of poking in there and then just, you know, send an email to somebody over at the league or, you know, if it's related to gender, reach out to us. Um, we would be more than happy to help direct folks to the bills because we probably know what bills you're talking about if it's in our lane. You know, you're looking for conservation, League of Conservation Voters, they're going to be delighted to help you out. So don't ever hesitate to have those asks. Um, all right. I'm going to, uh, let's see, I'm going to pause for a moment. And uh, we do have a couple of questions here about bills that are being worked on right now. So just a little bit about the way the bills have come to be and whether or not you will in fact find LBs you're looking for. Let me stop the share so I can look directly at you if that's helpful. Um, all legislators, they're elected in November. They are seated and you know, sworn in usually in early December. And then they have typically until mid-December to submit uh, bills for um, a title for their bill. They submit a title, then they bring language that goes to the reviser's office. The reviser are the incredibly smart people who understand where a bill should go in the main code, like the statutes, and how to write that so that it doesn't have any unintended consequences um, and so that it aligns with the way laws are supposed to look in Maine. At the beginning, there, all of these bill titles or like bill placeholders have an LR number, but nothing gets an LD number until that language is made publicly available. And that happens on a rolling basis. Um, because the revisor's office has to go through all of the bills, and there were 1,600 submitted this year. Um, you know, they start coming out the first week of January, and they will be coming out all the way through, I would guess, as late as the end of March. Um, and some bills will never come out. That might be because the sponsor has realized that somebody else already put a bill in with that title, or the sponsor maybe never really intended to pursue the bill, but they wanted to make sure they had a place in case they needed it. Um, there are lots of reasons a title might get put in and then it doesn't become a bill. But if you see a title, but you don't see an LD number coming out yet, um, you can reach directly out to the sponsor, but also just know that these things are, are happening on a rolling basis. I have a particular bill I've been working really closely on and uh, hoped it would come out about four weeks ago and it's nowhere in sight. And that's just, you know, everybody's doing their best, so. We keep hearing from legislators who, you know, have no idea when, when their bill is gonna come, but once they get, um, five days once their bill has um, got come from the revisor's office to look it over, see if they want to make any changes, get co-sponsors on it, and then they have to turn it back in. And so one of the particular bottlenecks that we keep running into is um, those five-day windows where suddenly everything that was sort of conceptual and you were still working on and you're still talking to legislators and maybe this person will sponsor it and maybe this one will and suddenly, okay, now this is the time when it becomes real and then it becomes printed and published um, and you start to see those bills pop up um, and then hopefully getting assigned um, a public hearing. And there's always the two weeks between the bill coming out and the public hearing. Sometimes though it's 
there's a longer gap, um, even months between a bill getting published and it getting its public hearing. And so if you ever, I think just like Dusty was just saying, if you ever see a um, bill that is, um, that you're really curious about and you don't know what's going on with it, usually the sponsor is the best person to talk to and they would um, probably be thrilled that somebody um, noticed what they were doing and would be happy to talk to you about it. Yeah, yes, agreed. Um, another question that came up is if a bill got tabled last session and you're wondering if it might have come in this session, um, how to find that out. Uh, also a question here in the chat is, you know, what are all of the bills that might be being worked on? So let's head back over to our legislature website. Here we are couple of ways to find all of the bills. Down here on the uh, left-hand side of the screen, you'll find the list of um, pre-cloture legislator and department or agency bills. Cloture is the deadline for submitting those bill titles. So you can click on this list and find um, all of the bill titles that were submitted sorted by sponsor, all of the bill titles sorted by subject, and then um, sorted by department and agency. So I like to look at them sorted by subject because that's how I think about my work. This is a humongous list. Um, it's not necessarily the best way. I mean, you can see it's still loading, loading, loading. This is the list of all 16 bill titles that were submitted. Um, in fact, it is loading so slowly, I am not going to sit here and wait, but that's a place where you can find all the bill titles. So that's one way to do it. Um, another way to do it is you can go back to that advanced bill search that I showed you. You can make sure that you're on the 130th because that's the session that we're in right now. And if you want all of the bill titles, you can go from one to 2000. Um, and you'll get a whole bunch of different things. Um, You've still got election over there. Oh, 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 thank you. Teamwork makes the dream work. There we go. All right. So you'll see a slew of, we put in 2000 because we know that there were like 1600 bills. You'll see up here that it actually only says one to 25 of 435. That is because of the 1600 titles that were submitted, only 435 have yet become LDs with their information publicly available. So if you are inclined to be looking at this every week, you can keep doing the search. You'll know that last week you, you know, they had only made it to 435. And then you only have to look at, you know, the ones that came out this week. But that's a lot of work for regular old folk. <laughs> um, you know, that's part of why you'll want to be looking around by sponsor, by subject, by title, or reaching out directly to your friends like Anna and myself who are working in the state house. So the um, league has its has to keep its own spreadsheet that we have a amazing volunteer, Nadine, who keeps up to date for us with all of the bills that are coming out that have been assigned. Um, to the committees that we look at or that deal with elections and tracks all of that stuff. And we would be lost through this website all the time if she didn't do that work for us. Yes, yeah. So that's a great next step. Let's talk about committees because the committees, I cannot express how essential they are to all of the work that happens. And I'm sure that that has been covered in um, previous sessions or will be covered but this is a great place to find out what's going on by issue area because the committees only really address their specific issue areas. Um, so 
if you click on that committee, it was right front and center. You'll see um, every committee has its own little portal. Um, I worked in anti-sexual violence work for many, many years. So criminal justice and public safety, this is the committee that I spent all my time in. Um, and this is a great little portal because it gives you all the things you're gonna need to know about a committee, both um, there, it'll link you directly to their YouTube channel. So you can see any recordings of past um, hearings or work sessions that they've had. You can submit testimony on any of their bills directly to them. You'll see that you can email them directly as a group. You can see who their clerk is and you can scroll down and see what their schedule looks like. So if you're particularly interested in what's happening in criminal justice or you know, elections or education, you can go to the committee and see what's on the calendar for this week, this month. Um, and you know, it lets us know, okay, they're working on information sharing by criminal justice agencies. And that links directly to the bill at hand. Um, so these are all the, the days. If you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see all of the committee members and it links directly to the members so you can contact them there. Um, there's a full weekly schedule that's published every week just for this committee and then notices for each individual hearing. Um, you do though have to scroll down to see that beyond this sort of top line schedule. So I just like to remind folks that that's true. Um, and you can- Other thing that's helpful is that if, oh, and I see someone actually just was putting this in the chat as I was about to say it, that you can get on the mailing list if you know you're gonna be following a particular committee closely, and then you will get each of those hearing and work session notices sent to you, which is another um, way of saving yourself some time. Yes, yeah, that mailing list is really super useful. You will probably get a lot more mail than you necessarily want or need. Um, <laughs> but if you really want to stay on top of what's going on in a special certain issue area, then the committee mailing list is where it's at. So, um, all right. Okay, great. So that's where the committees are. Um, the other calendar function that's really helpful is right at the top on the home. You'll see a calendar. This is like the master calendar of all of the things. Oh. I often find it, did you see it started to load and then it decided, no, not gonna do that. Yeah. I don't know if this is my computer or what the deal is, but I get this a lot where it begins to load the huge calendar and then it doesn't want to. Um, your computer may have better luck. Um, so let's see it doesn't like to play legislative hearings directly through this for me whenever I try to load those I'm so I'm I love that they now are streaming legislative committee hearings on YouTube it's so much easier for me to find them so that's one of the COVID silver linings um, in my book. Yes, yep. But if this calendar link works for you, then you should be able to see the master calendar of all of the committee hearings, all of the work sessions. I often prefer to see it though by committee or by issue area because it just helps my um, helps me understand what bucket to put it in. And then down here at the bottom, there are some quick links as well. And you can see um, public hearings and work sessions. Oh, look, here we go. Here's the master calendar. So that's the other way to get at it. Uh, and that's each page. I mean, each, uh, each day. So let's see. The other thing that I wanted to just spend a little bit um, of time and make sure we looked at is how to, um, We'll go back to that donor breast milk bill because I know that there's some stuff in here. So if you look down on the left-hand side, 
um, there's a lot of information about the, the bill that you're looking at. And you should know that it changes as the bill progresses through the session. So this bill text and other documents, this is really like so helpful. So it'll give you the LD number. Um, it'll link you directly to the bill text. So you will see here that like, here we are, this is the bill. When it was filed, um, who the primary sponsor is, who all of the co-sponsors are, and then all of the text of the bill. If you're not familiar with looking at bill text, everything that's underlined is the newly proposed language. Everything that's not underlined is what was already there. And then um, if it's a strikeout, that is proposed language um, to be removed. And down at the bottom, you'll see what is meant to be a plain language summary of the bill. Um, you will also, let's see, see the committee info. And here, there's not much yet because not much has happened yet. This is the committee that it's been referred to. Um, whether or not a vote has been reported out um, and then anything else that's scheduled to happen. So right now this bill is scheduled to have a public hearing on Thursday. Um, and then it has a nice handy link for all of the public hearings and work sessions coming up for that committee. Um, you will also find here like the title and section. This is where it will go in the law once the bill has passed all the way through, should it pass all the way through this will show you like where in the statute it's going to live. If there are future amendments, um, you know, if the committee or the sponsor or other partners or allies um, send in amendments that are considered, that will all be here. Um, sponsors as well, roll calls. These are votes where an individual or where an individual call is made um, and every person, every legislator has a vote that is recorded, either yay or nay or an abstention. So if there is a roll call, this is the spot to find it. So um, that kind of front page of a bill is, a really great spot to go find a lot of information. There isn't as much here right now because it's a new bill. Um, and so, you know, it hasn't had a lot of history, but let's, um, we'll go back to that LD 1410 from last year. This was this sort of our signature work. Um, and it was to establish a commission for paid family leave in Maine. Oh, and, oh. 1410. There we go. All right. So you'll see that the actions here are, you know, it was referred to the committee. Um, it was carried over from one session into the next. It was carried over into the special session of the summer. And then it died as everything did during the summer because of COVID. Um, but you know, it's got like a history there that's laid out for you. Sometimes these feel confusing. Like you may not know what all of this back and forth is. Um, if it's bold and capital, then that's the key thing to know. Like, okay, here's the committee. Oh, it was carried over. That means that it went from one session into the next session and it's dead, bold and capital, so. We talked a little bit in session one. If you didn't um, do that, you can go back and watch um, our video of that, a little bit about the um, understanding some of the language of how a bill becomes a law and where we talked a little bit about some of the confusing terminology with um, engrossed and enacted and um, what does it mean when something is sent forth with we didn't cover every possibility but um, there's a little bit more information about those things there one thing that i do find particularly um important to know though when looking at this website well so two things that i that i would point out one is that um when you look at a roll call 
um, the votes are listed as yes or yes or no, Y and N. It's really important to know exactly what they were voting on in that roll call, because sometimes they're voting on a report on an ought to pass, an OTP report, which means that if a yes on an ought to pass is a yes on the subject of the bill, but sometimes they're voting on an ought not to pass report. And in that case, a yes is actually a no on the bill. So it gets super confusing on that. And just I'm just putting that out there as one of the things that I find gets the toughest to um, the place where people get confused the most often and are most likely to be like, I can't believe my legislator voted for or against this bill. What were they possibly thinking? It's worth just checking on what that ought to pass, ought not to pass report that came out of the committee. It's a little complicated, the procedure for which one gets voted on and which chamber, but um, if you see something strange, it's sort of like the turn your computer on, turn it off again um, of understanding um, some of these things. The way I think about that is that, you know, it's not the committee's job to pass the bill. It's the committee's job to make a recommendation. They make a recommendation that the bill should be killed or that the bill should be amended or that the bill should be passed. And then it is the full legislature's job to vote on the recommendation. And so if the recommendation is to be killed and they say yes, then that means the bill is to be killed. Um, but I just keep that, that in mind that the committee is not like up or, you know, they're, they're making a suggestion and then the full vote is on that suggestion. I also see another question in the chat. Um, so where it says dead, does that mean dead? That, that means dead forever. I think one of the things that um, people don't always realize is that that two year cycle for a legislature, like you vote folks in, in November, they have the two year cycle, nothing passes outside of that cycle. So within the container of the two years, a bill can carry over from year one to year two, but there is no year three. Like once there's a new election, it's an entirely new legislature with entirely new bills. So when things died last year because of COVID and they didn't come back into a special session, um, then we elected a new legislature and all of those bills are just gone forever. If you want to see them happen again, then they needed to be submitted again for this session. Um, and that's kind of crummy and also kind of good. It means that every legislature is addressing their own issues and not dealing with sort of past or incomplete work from prior sessions. And one of the good things I do think about the main legislature is that every bill gets a public hearing and, you know, every bill is going to get, you know, as long as it gets print, like, printed, like we talked about, it's going to get out in front of, um, in front of the public. Um, and so even if an idea has come up, you know, and been killed five times before or 10 times before, um, somebody wants to bring it up, it's going to get another chance, which sometimes can feel like Groundhog Day, but it's also how you make progress on things that take many years to build the consensus around and getting them through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we do see that bills come back again and again and again, um, but often in different forms. And when things are working as they should, um, they come back better and better and more likely to pass with a larger coalition. So, um, there was another thing that I thought would be helpful, uh, but I think it's slipped to my mind now. So. A question of how you see if a particular representative has voted on something. Um, do you wanna address that? Sure. Uh, it's hard to show you how that's happening in real time because we have not had, there have been almost no votes yet this session. Like 
a bill goes and has its hearing, usually about a week later, a bill has a work session. And sometimes at that work session, the committee will vote. Um, and then, but sometimes, you know, they won't have a vote until another week or two, or if it's really complicated, it might be months before they vote on a bill. Um, so, you know, we're right now, I do not know if there's any place to show you where there actually has been a vote taken and recorded and visible to the public. Um, Anna, I don't know if you have any bills that have been. But again, I would just, yeah, not from nothing from this session yet, because we're still so early in the session and the le full legislature isn't meeting. Um, but I was thinking that if you wanted to pull up um, something from last session, um, you know, an example of one with some of the roll call stuff I was talking about would be um, LD 54. That was the bill to ban lobbyist contributions. Um, I won't go through all of the complexity, but it's, it gives you an example of what a roll call looks like. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I think is a little bit of a shame is that there isn't um, one way to say, okay, here's my legislator. What is every single thing that they did a roll call on and how did they vote on it? Like the way you would if an organization was doing a scorecard and laying out a bunch of bills and a bunch of votes. Um, in some ways that's probably good because like we were saying that um, if you just look at yeses and nos, you can get kind of confused about what's going on if you don't have the bill's context. Um, but you can see in one place all of the bills your legislator has sponsored, but you have to look up bill by bill if you want to see how they voted or have a, um, or, you know, look at the scorecards that are produced by organizations working on different issues um, and um, doing that. But do you want to look at that um, House roll call there? So. Oh. So yeah. this is, just shows you, um, you look up your um, legislator here. This is by, you know, by last name and they include the town. Um, the first column is the party. The second column is the vote. Um, in this case, a yes was a good thing. Um, and you can see that um, it was a mostly but not entirely um, party line vote. Um, it passed 88 to 53. There were seven legislators absent, um, two of, or, and then two who had an excuse. Um, and so um, I actually find that kind of helpful um, in order to see where um, it does tell you what was the number required for Sarah Bell. That's, that's the most efficient way to do it, but it's not super efficient all the time. There's also another place where you can see overall roll calls um, in the house. And so if you go over to the house sub website here and scroll down, um, oh, roll call statistics. Um, I'm excited. I did not know about this tab. Uh, <laughs> I knew I'd learned something. All right. So again, you have to know what legislature you're looking for. Um, but here we are. So these are all of the roll calls that took place in the House last year. But, you know, there are a slew of them. So you, you have to, to look all the way through what, what you're looking for. Um, not every vote gets a roll call or, you know, like lots and lots of bills do not get a roll call. They're, most of them are up or down votes. Um, but if you hope that one was, this is the place where you're going to find all the roll calls. And so you can just scroll on through. Um, and there they are. Let's see. Many of the most controversial do because a legislator can ask for it to be passed with a roll call and um, or to be to get a roll call. Um, and often that um, with something where one party or the other wants it to be on record um, how the vote was so that they can campaign on the issue, they'll ask for it. Um, and so there sometimes is some politics on um, whether or not things get roll calls. Yes. Yep. 
Um, question about why there's a lag between the committee vote and it's being reported out. Uh, that is, I mean, it's a combination of just logistics that it, it actually takes them some time to, for the nonpartisan staff to get all of the pieces together and get it out into the public. So there really are just partly logistic lags. There are sometimes reasons why a committee chair um, or leadership may prefer to hold back a vote um, and have it not reported out to the public until they get pieces lined up um, for their future vote in the full House or Senate. So sometimes logistics, sometimes politics, which is probably basically the answer to almost every question you have. <laughs> Um, let's see, we've got a couple more questions yep. here. Um, it's a good question whether, um, so if a bill is passed, um, do bills expire? Um, and it's a, you, I would say that's a, a usually no, but every once in a while they will pass a bill that has a sunset provision um, in it or something like that where, um, it is written so that it will expire um, unless it's renewed. But mostly the bills are there until a future legislature comes along and changes it again. Um, and there are many, many changes made every session. And at the same time, there are some pieces of the um, state laws that have been the same for a very long time. And it kind of depends on the area. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh... For folks who have specific bills that you're looking for um, and you really want to make sure you're tracking them, I would get on the mailing list for the committee that they're assigned to. Like if you know you don't want to miss a bill, that's a way to do it. Uh, I would also uh, just flag for folks that I'm sure the league has information like this available, but just to um, let you know that the Maine Women's Lobby has, we have a public bill tracker with about 200 bills. Um, so we're mainwomen.org. Um, and if you head over to the legislative efforts, you'll see um, the bill tracker. So you can click through on that. And this is all available to the public. It is not up to the moment, but we do update the entire thing every Monday. So, you know, 200 bills all related to gender equity, and we take a very expansive um, view of what gender equity includes. So, you know, we are committed to decarceration and, um, you know, drugs and criminal justice and a range of different things. And so you can see every time a bill gets an LD and gets a link, it all goes here. Um, and that if there has been a hearing scheduled, it's gonna show up. So there are not very many scheduled yet. Like it's all pretty, pretty slow. Um, I will You're inspiring me, Dusty. We have, like I said, we have a tracker like this that we use in our um, advocacy committee with the league. And um, it's making me think, you know, why maybe we should make it public. There's not much, you know, in there that we, uh, um, that we couldn't um, uh, have be public. But the best way to follow the election stuff that the league is working on is to be on our mailing list, which probably many of you are in order to get, have gotten this, but you might've seen it posted somewhere. Um, and you can go to lwvme.org to sign up there. And we send out an email every Monday called Action Under the Dome. And that includes information about upcoming hearings and work sessions and votes that we are tracking and some of the things that happened in the week before um, we'll throw in stuff about upcoming events and occasionally an article we think people should read and that kind of stuff there but we're tr um, we try to use that as a as your sort of Monday morning what's coming up in the week ahead um, so that's a, a I think a pretty good balance between um, lots of information, but not quite at the overwhelming level of getting it straight from the uh, tap yeah. here of the legislative website. Yeah, we, we have the same, you know, Monday email 
It is not Monday morning. I do not know how you get yours out on Monday morning. Blows my mind. I assume you're working on Sunday. Kudos. Um. It, um, this is what happens when you have you have a legacy of an amazing volunteer run organization where we had um, people who put who um, you know put it together over the weekend, and then we got a very um, dedicated um, comms director who puts in a couple Sunday hours to um, it. piece it all together. So it's well, uh, every time it lands in my inbox, yeah, I yeah. note it. Ours goes out around noon. So, uh, and I will also just uh, so feel free to sign up for ours as well. Um, there is lots of overlap and lots of areas where it's different. Um, also, many of the things we talked about exist over here in our how to collection in two to three minute bills. Um, I typically add a new one every couple of days, a couple of, I've been doing a couple a week. So if there are things that you wonder about or that we covered here that there's not a how-to for, I'll do one, let me know. They're pretty easy. So I'd be happy to answer your questions in a tiny video that other people could see as well. Fantastic, thank you so much, Dusty. I'm just gonna pop up our um, slides again here and um, run through a couple more things. Um, and I know if folks may have more questions, I think um, I um, underestimated um, the um, amount of things we, that we could talk about with a legislative website and thought we were gonna have lots of, lots of time at the end here, but here we are almost at our close. Um, the, um, skipping back through a little recap. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know why um, I made those because I clearly didn't use them. <laughs> that's all, it's all good um we just wanted to remind everyone a that today's webinar is part of the league's um and democracy main state action day um so we are encouraging um everyone to contact your legislators it would be lovely if you felt like contacting them around um online voter registration, national popular vote, or corporate contribution ban. If you go to the League's Take Action page, we have some pre-written emails that you can edit and personalize and send directly off to your legislator. But honestly, we'd be happy if you emailed your legislators about um, anything that you cared about. Um, we're doing a book club you can sign up for um, with um, Let the People Pick the President about the national popular vote. Um, we're gonna be doing that on the first chapter on President's Day. Um, and then um, it's not, I would say we put out in the morning, you should watch what was going on in committee and the veterans and legal affairs that was looking at a constitutional amendment on ranked choice voting, but you can still go back and watch it on YouTube. And the reason I'm saying all of these things is um, because they're important, but also because each day of our advocacy week, um, you can submit um, what you've done of the day's actions and each thing you do gets you entered into a raffle um, where we are raffling off um, a copy of Let the People Pick the President. We've got some cool suffrage tea towels. We've got some um, cards made by a main artist, some fun, fun prizes for taking action this week. Um, and then things that are upcoming. Um, Check out the whole Advocacy Week schedule. Tomorrow is our Throwback Thursday. We're talking about um, some things with a lens on history and we're doing a craft night tomorrow for where we will get time for conversation and um, a little more socializing. Um, and then next Tuesday, we are doing an info session on the corporate contribution ban, um, something that um, I think touches just about every issue that we all care about. Um, but um, fo a focus of Maine Citizens for Clean Elections. And then next Wednesday is the next in this advocacy training series where we'll be doing, how did it get that way? Um, all of the questions that we ask, when we're like, this is so strange. Why does Maine do it this way? Why do we have people's vetoes? Um, why do we have term limits? why does the main house have one website and the Senate has another? I don't know if we'll answer that question, but I'm curious. Um, but we're going to have a panel of um, some historians and journalists and um, former legislators to talk about um, of the um, quirks of the system, why they exist. Um, you can see the full um, 
full of all of our trainings, um, including the links to that how a bill becomes a law and um, how to effectively contact your legislator, um, as well as the recording of this session. And um, we're all up at democracymaine.org um, slash upcoming webinars. And you will also get an email um, after this. Um, it'll come from Jen um, with the link to today's session and, um, and that link as well. Um, and I will stop there with all of our planned content um, and thank Dusty again for sharing your expertise with us. Um, and um, if folks have any last questions, um, feel free to um, throw them in the chat or even unmute yourself. And I'm gonna stick around for another couple minutes to see if, if anyone has some um, last burning questions, but otherwise, thank you so much for joining us tonight.